It's theCUBE, covering HPE Big Data Conference 2016. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. We're back, Amaresh Tripathi is here. He's the partner and the practice lead of the big data analytics business at PwC, one of the, of course, world-class consultancies. Amaresh, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having me here. You're welcome, so we're here at Analytics Conference. Analytics is your, your wheelhouse. Uh, what are you seeing so far? I know it's sort of you know, day one, but what's the vibe at the show? It's uh, very interesting. It's a, it's a great mix of use cases and technology uh, coming together, and uh, great to see HP bringing up a suite of new uh, ideas and products, and like the entire stack, building up the stack in a lot of ways, and a lot of use cases that, that I constantly learn from, so fantastic. So tell us the PwC analytics story. That massive organization, sure. uh, obviously, um, your role and sort of how how it PwC got started in that analytics business. You've been in it. Maybe it wasn't called analytics, or maybe it was. Um, yeah, <laughs> interesting. But if you think about it, we've been in the analytics business for 150 years, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, all we what whatever we do is to drive insight with data and build trust around data so that others can act on it. Mm -hmm. If you fundamentally look at PwC from that angle. Uh, the analytics as in the big data space, as we are thinking about, that's probably a journey that's uh, uh, close to 20 years old in some ways with big data with the different definitions and we, used, we do a lot of, we, we traditionally used to do a lot of work in forensics and financial analysis. Uh, so we've been in this business for a long time. Uh, we have organized the business analytics aspect of it. How do you use data to make better business decisions? Uh, that practice is probably around 13 years, 13, 13, 14 years old now, uh, and the way we are organized is we are, we essentially it's a center of excellence model, we call the analytics hub, uh, where we incubate uh, a lot of the uh, analytics offerings and our services, and our vision is, it's not like analytics is a standalone business or standalone thing, it is integrated into each and every of our service line. So we have this, this hub and spoke model where we incubate the services and we work with our various industry uh, uh, service offerings and integrate analytics into it. And, and it's been very successful for us. I think it's a differentiator to think about not as an analytics, as a standalone thing, but something that's part of everything we do. What are the challenges that you have? Some of, the, some of these companies you work with are very old line companies mm -hmm. and, and operate by seat of the pants management principles. Well, how do you get them to think analytics first? It's a great point because, uh, I mean, you asked what, what we do. There are essentially two things we do. We actually help in building the analytics operating model and helping companies be take benefit of analytics from an how you are, from organization perspective, and the second is actually through a tools and solutions perspective. On the first one, uh, what I have, so if you think about how, uh, how would you institute a culture of analytics in an organization, that's the, to be honest, the most fundamental issue uh, companies run into. And there's no good answer for it. The right answer is, I've never seen a company embrace analytics without a top-down leadership support. So someone has to be a believer in analytics uh, in the organization pretty high up to go and institute analytics. And then that, and, and that sets a tone for the rest of the organization to follow. Everything else, the investment, the people, the talent, the culture, the processes and governance. I mean, we have an entire process around how we start thinking about analytics, how to build an analytics, analytics-driven organization. But that fundamentally uh, aligns, has to align with someone's vision around an organization that they need to do that. So how do we adapt and force the change? I think part of it is they have to be a little bit of the risk. Someone has to believe in it and be ready for it, and then you support it with the right set of strategy to make the change happen. And thinking about initiatives that you're involved in, sure. if you had to break, let's simplify it for, yeah. from my mind, if you had to break them into running the business, growing the business, and transforming the business, mm -hmm. specifically as it relates to the analytics practice, how much of it is run the business better versus grow the business versus really transform the business? It's a mix of all three. Mm -hmm. uh, our, An and even mix, or is it weighted? Uh, no, it's, I, I think it's a, it's a mix of all three, depending on the industry sectors we go in. Mm -hmm. So as part of like the strategy we focus on, so healthcare, healthcare, for example, where I've spent a ton of time on, it is an industry in transformation. So it's a great opportunity 
to embed analytics in the transformation process, which we are doing. We are, we are helping uh, hospitals, financially struggling hospitals sometimes, I mean sometimes very well run hospitals, fundamentally change how they think about customers, how they think about their physicians and the relationships between physicians and uh, patients uh, and, and the payers cost and quality aspects of it, and embed analytics right into it. Because they are anyways going through a transformation, uh, embedding analytics is, is, is the way to go. Compared to other industry, which probably, let's say, is, is not kind of, it's more stable, and uh, there's not a lot of regulatory pressure, as in healthcare, there I think the focus is around growth, is how do you kind of- Retail would be growth. an example. Retail right? would be a great example where yeah, the, the, the demographics and everything is a 2% growth industry, how do you make it more efficient and at the same time look for micro growth opportunities? That's, that's, that's a great example. And I think the key is to balance where the industry is and how, what kind of analytic solutions you put in there. Can you give a couple of examples of projects you've worked on recently where you've worked with customers who thought, you thought were doing something really revolutionary? So, many, many examples like that. Let me just choose a couple uh, from to different industries. Uh, one is uh, in healthcare. Uh, we have working with a very large uh, specialty hospital, specialty cancer hospital, uh, one, of the, one of the finest in the world. They have decided that their future growth uh, in this entire transformation is not going to be based on building brick and mortar hospitals and serving patients in a traditional way. They want to be an IP based company because their key asset is the data that they generate for when they see 100,000, 200, like, like 100,000 patients a month. And there is a data when the, with the interaction between the physician and the, and the patient. How do you capture the data? How do you store the data or, and draw insights from the data to, be, to create a decision support engine for other oncologists around the world, right? And export that software as, as a service offering. And, and it's an entire new business line for that. Very interesting, I mean, and we are, we are partnering with uh, HP on a lot, putting a lot of the solution together, but very challenging if you think in terms of EMR data, the clinical expertise that is required, the, 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 the analytics that goes in that from a, an NLP perspective. The governance. Governance around the data and the security around the data, but fundamentally, a doctor has to change behavior because now they are not going to only rely on them. It's, I mean, it's about augmenting the doctor and the physician in how they uh, approach it. And that's not only here. It's, 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 it, it applies to a, a hospital in Texas, but at the same time it could apply to a hospital in Malaysia. That's fascinating. Well, you talked about the importance of top-down earlier. In that yeah. example, uh, uh, it's sort of uh, top-down and middle-in, I guess, is the doctors have so much influence yes. in that environment, right? Yes, and, and the top-down is because most, most, most of these organizations are led by physicians. Yeah. So, so yeah, right. Right, that's, that, that's right. The, s the second example, I think we all could relate to who are always on the road. Uh, we are working for a large airline. Uh, and, uh, I mean, we, we hear a lot about predictive maintenance uh, in, in its various forms. Uh, nowadays, it's a hot topic. But what was interesting, if you think about predictive maintenance, is I mean, airlines have been in the I mean, in the in the sensor space and IoT space for a long, long time. They have all kinds of sensors, like showing all kinds of data, like they generate terabytes and terabytes of data a second. It's mission critical. It's mission critical, <laughs> exactly. Um, and they have been doing it for years. Uh, and then, at the same time, they also have been generating a lot of like regulatory requirements like pilot logs. Pilot have this essentially every before every flight and after every flight pilot just fills out a log. It's, it's a handwritten document. And we have been doing this uh, project with this airline where we have been able to blend both the sensor data and the pilot log data to predict delays and cancellations, avoidable delays and cancellations. Uh, so, I mean, that's a different view of predictive maintenance, but you essentially don't want to cancel or delay a flight uh, because you have to pay for a hotel, you have to kind of uh, book them on the flights, it kind of creates havoc in the network. How can you avoid that rather than going from a scheduled maintenance to a predictive maintenance kind of a model, but taking the sensor data, which is, I would say, high volume, low uh, signal, a lot of noise, low signal, with an unstructured data from pilot log, which is actually a very high signal because it's an expert is writing it, but it's just hard to analyze. But how do you blend it to, to, together and create machine learning models around it? I mean, and we've been able to do it and reduce the delays and cancellations by 30%. Wow, we're very tight on time. The last question yeah. is we've been, you know, we studied the so-called big data market and we, we noticed early on that 
it's very services heavy um, because it's so complicated and there are so few resources. Certainly at the time, there are more now, but still, uh, the expertise is, is lacking. Do you see that changing? You know, people have predicted, oh no, software is going to sort of eat the world, and and and, or do you see still this analytics business is a very services-led, continue to be complicated, moving fast. So you need the expertise of a partner like yours for the, you know, perpetually. It's going to be a blend of both. I think uh, technology companies will move to um, or will have partnerships like. Like HP and ours is a great example where we are having partnerships. You mm -hmm. would need strong technology and strong services. I think it's a general evolution of technology. Things will get simpler to the end user over time. So which essentially means you have to have more and more solutions. Industry folks, vertical specific solutions that will come out. And you see in the market, even the software that's coming out has become much more vertically focused right now, industry focused. And, and, and we are investing in a lot of technology also. Uh, I mean, not only just the services, we are building a lot of accelerators. We call something App Hub, which we are collaborating with HP on it also, around building industry specific solutions that make it easier. So I think there will be a, a convergence of solutions that will accelerate and make it the analytics simpler, and at the same time you see the talent pool getting upgraded with all the uh, pro like programs, uh, masters of analytics programs, or even data science, or even in business. Yeah. So I think the talent is getting upgraded, solutions are becoming simpler, and I think that's how the, the true uh, cycle will start in terms of productivity will cycle. And the start. data keeps growing to add Absol complexity. But Amaris, Absolutely. thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We'll leave it Thank there. you so much for having All me. Right. It was our a pleasure. pleasure. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest. We're live from Boston. This is the HP Big Data Conference. Hashtag seize the data. We'll be right back. Yeah.